In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Our chaplain's report today comes from a passage that I was just randomly going through. I've been reading through the Minor Prophets recently, which, by the way, I don't think enough people do. There is a wealth of information and wisdom coming from the Minor Prophets, and on the surface, they all seem kind of similar. I mean, Prophet comes in, Israel's not acting right, the Prophet tries to straighten them up, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but the messaging is kind of similar, talking about God's wrath being visited upon a certain group of people. And so because of that, I think that a lot of people either get bored with them or they don't want to dive too deep into them because of that. But there is so much richness contained within the wisdom of the Minor Prophets. And today we're going to Zechariah, Zechariah 7, 8 through 13. Then the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus has the Lord of hosts said, Dispense true justice, and practice kindness and compassion each to his brother. And do not oppress the widow or the orphan, the stranger or the poor, and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. But they refused to pay attention, and turned turned a stubborn shoulder, and stopped their ears from hearing. They made their hearts like flint, so that they could not hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent by his Spirit through the former prophets. Therefore great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. And just as he called, and they would not listen, so they called, and I would not listen, says the Lord of hosts. I understand that there's a lot to digest in that short little passage of Scripture, but we're going to do the best that we can to extrapolate what God is trying to say here. First of all, I wanted you to notice about these few verses. Don't they seem pretty reasonable? To to you, seriously, don't, don't they seem like reasonable requests from God? He's not even talking about doing anything spiritually complicated. He's not talking about anything that's necessarily... Uh, going to be overburdensome in the sense that he's not giving specific instructions for religious ceremonies or Sabbaths or sacrifices. That's not what God is upset with them about. What are the things that he requested of them? To do justice correctly. In other words, don't get lazy about it. Don't perverse it. You do justice the way that I mean justice, the way that I want you to do justice. And then what else? Just take care of the widows and orphans. Be compassionate towards one another. Take care of one another. And don't devise evil in your hearts. You see, one thing that I notice about this passage is that as reasonable as requests as the seem, as basic as it seems, I mean, this is like the, the elementary level stuff when it comes to God's law and how to live a godly life doesn't mean it's necessarily easy, but it is very simple. You notice how he says that it always goes back to the heart? Because if you look back in this verse that we were talking about in in the first few verses, where he says, practice kindness and compassion to his brother, and then he says, do not devise evil in your hearts. I mean, that's a heart issue, isn't it? That's what he keeps going back to, that All these things that you're not doing that I want you to do and all the things that you are doing that I don't want you to do, it goes back to a matter of the heart, the intention, what you want to do, what you desire to do, what you have passion to do. Israel had a heart problem. That their hearts were no longer turned towards God. They were turned towards themselves. They were following their impulses. They were following what they wanted to do. When God is saying, this stuff isn't complicated. I didn't ask you to do some great deed. I didn't ask you to conquer some great land or anything. I'm just telling you to take care of one another and treat each other kindly. 
And the reason that you're not doing that and the reason that you're devising these evil things against one another and hurting each other is because your hearts are not right. Your heart is not open to me. It is not ready to receive my law. And because of that, these things have happened to you. There's a really powerful imagery that's used there, too, you may remember. He says that their hearts are like flint. What do you know about flint? Of course, it's the stone that we use to start a fire. Do you know what's interesting about flint, though? It's very, very hard, but also very brittle. See, that's the reason that makes it ideal for starting a fire is because it's so hard that you can scrape metal across it and it'll create sparks because there's a lot of friction created because of how hard it is. But it's also really easy to break in pieces. You can even shave little pieces of flint off if you're starting a fire and use those pieces to, to start it burning. So why use that as an analogy for the heart? It's not that their hearts were strong, it's that their hearts were hard. There's a big difference. Their hearts were not prepared to weather storms, their hearts were not prepared to endure the challenges that were coming upon them. They were just immune to having it change, to having God influence their life and direct their passions and their desires. And because of that, they only followed their own passions, their own desires, didn't listen to anybody else. They were primarily concerned with what's in it for me. And that's why God says that their hearts are like, uh, are like a flint. Because it's so easy to break. When the only concern is yourself and your own happiness, then you have a heart that's very easy to break. Because... Let's be honest, we live in a cruel world and things don't always go our way. When our heart and our passion is turned towards God and serving his children, our hearts aren't easy to break. They endure because we see a greater purpose outside of ourselves. Even if we're not thrilled to death to be wherever we are at the moment, it doesn't matter because we see that larger purpose. We see beyond our own desires and our own ambition. We see a plan unfolding that we get to be a part of that will last throughout all of eternity. And that's how our hearts can be soft and yet strong. The exact opposite of the kind of heart that Israel had here that was like a flint. And so this is the question that I leave you with. Why had they not opened their hearts to God? Why was Israel immune to God's warnings and his instruction? I don't think people have changed that much. Isn't it the same reason that we have people in the world today that are the same way? Isn't that the reason that we're sometimes like that? We hear God's word, we hear his commandments, and we think, ah, oh, that's just too hard. That's going to be too complicated. If I start doing this now, I'm going to have to help everybody. If I start caring about this thing, I'm going to have to care about that thing. And it's just so difficult to keep up with. You don't think Israel felt the same way? I think the reason that their hearts were hardened is because they were so concerned with taking care of their own homestead, their own family, which taking care of your family is obviously a good thing, but not if you're concerned primarily with your own desires and ambition. You see, what was going on here is they made themselves immune to instruction because it was going to get in the way of what they wanted to do. And does that happen to us way too often? That we think, oh, well, I probably should go to that prayer breakfast, but I, I just want to sleep in. Or, you know, I should go visit that person in the hospital, but that's going to throw my whole schedule off. You know, I probably should do something about evangelizing and sharing the gospel with somebody, but if I do that now, it's going to become a weekly thing. It's going to be such a hassle. I really should read my Bible, but, you know, I am binge-watching Netflix, and then you do binge-watch Netflix, and then you realize that you have to go to bed, and, well, I could do it now, but then I'm going to be really tired for work in the morning. So we make excuse after excuse after excuse. And that's how a heart becomes like flint. It's not strong, but it's very brittle. 
And if we want that kind of strength, that is a strength that only comes from having a right relationship with God. Zechariah understood it. We need to understand it now. And the reason that it's so important that we get that right is because of what happened in the last verse. You remember the last verse that we read in verse 12 and 13, that the warning was, since I called to them and they did not answer, when you call to me in prayer, times of distress, whatever it is, I will not answer. If we want a God that is going to listen to us, to understand our request, we have to turn our hearts towards him. We can't just be like the person that only calls on God and only reaches out to him when we feel like he can do something for us. To establish a real love and a real desire for God means to turn our hearts towards him in the good times and the bad. And when we do that, we'll have the spiritual strength and the providence to help us through those dark times. Stay the course, friends. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.